All right, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the beautiful Rath East Link Community Center. We're inside the Community Credit Union Arena inside the Rath East Link Community Center as we get ready for the final game of the day here at the 2022 Hockey Nova Scotia Day of Champions. So far, we've handed out hardware to the U11Bs, the U11As, the U11AA's, the u 13 b and now it's time for the U13A championship game between the Tassa Ducks in black with the white numbers and the Cape Breton County Islanders in white with the blue and red numbers. Ducks and Islanders, not Anaheim and Long Island, Tassa and Cape Breton County for the right to claim that they are the best U13A team in the province of Nova Scotia. It's been a fantastic day of hockey so far here at the Rath Eastern Community Center. We've had four great games and this certainly promises to be a fifth. We'll have four more tomorrow to wrap up this great weekend of hockey here at the Rath East Link Community Center. Taking a look at the goaltenders for the Ducks, you've got a defensive or a goaltending combination of Sophie McDonald and Brennan Fitzgerald, McDonald taking first reps on warm-up, so 
Perhaps that means that McDonald will get the start. We'll have to wait and see on that. And at the other end of the ice for the Cape Breton County Islanders, Calix Torrendis and Owen Arsenault are the defensive tandem. And it looked like uh, it was uh, Torrendis who was taking first reps. So we'll have to see if that indeed means that Calix Torrendis is the starting goaltender for the Cape Breton County Islanders. We'll wait and we will find out that shortly. Actually, it was Arsenault who took first reps. My apologies. <laughs> Torrendis is in there now and so we'll wait and see who gets the start. For both of these teams, it's been a long road through this 2021-22 season just to get to this point, including a stretch of a couple of months where they weren't able to play games at all between mid-December and mid-February. But they fought through, they kept going, they kept pushing forward, and now a chance for each of these teams to claim that they are the best U13A hockey team in the province of Nova Scotia. And it looks like it is indeed Sophie McDonald who is going to get the start for the Ducks who are the visiting team in this game in their dark Anaheim style jerseys. And still waiting to see which goaltender ends up in the crease? It looks like it is going to be Owen Arsenault. No, Arsenault's making his way to the bench. So it is Turindis who is going to get the start. And if I am mispronouncing that name, I do apologize. Or Tornidas, excuse me. Tornidas. If I could read my own writing, I'd I tell you, I'd be I'd be way ahead of the game if I could read my own writing. Tornidas is the goaltender but again if i'm mispronouncing that i do apologize for the ducks it's going to be amaral sullivan and pridham and the defensive pairing of keeping and anis for the islanders burke with burke that's going to be fun to have the two burks on the same line and McDougal is the third forward in the starting combination, the defensive pairing of Young and Small. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere as well, but we are underway here at the Rath Eastland Community Center. Going back to get the puck is Small, and that's going to be an icing call against the Ducks here just 20 seconds in to the opening period. Again, so far we've given out the hardware in four other Different four other levels. The three U11 games, B, A, and Double A, and here in the U13s, we've already given out the hardware in the B. That game just wrapping up a little bit earlier, as the winners were the team from New Waterford, the New Waterford Sharks, defeating the uh, Dartmouth Whalers in the U13B game. In the U11 double A's, it was the Pictou County Crushers falling in a tough one as they lost to the Sackville Flyers. The U11 A championship was won by the team representing the North in that one, and that was the Straight Richmond Pirates. And winning the opening game, the U11 B division, it was the Coal Harbor Red Wings. Will it be the Tassa Ducks or will it be the Cape Breton County Islanders who join those four teams as the champions here this afternoon? We have 45 minutes of hockey to find that out. There's a shot, chance, couple of chances, and Tornitas ends up standing tall, making a big save there. And now bringing the puck out to center ice is Jador. Jador with the shot, he scores! Colton Jador opens the scoring for the Cape Breton County Islanders with a 
slap shot from long range that gets over the shoulder of Sophie McDonald at the 138 mark of this first period. And it's 1-0 for the Islanders. Jidor with the goal. And here come the Islanders again. Looking to get that pass across to the back door for Marks. But his stick was tied up just enough there by Cowper. As and Crawley with the lone assist on the goal. Again, that's Colton Jidor assisted by Hudson Crawley at 138 to open the scoring. And now the puck played out to center ice. Gathered up there by Cowper. He'll get it in across the line. Now it's played back out again. Going back to get it is Gurney, but that's going to be an icing call against the Islanders here with 2.32 gone in the opening period. We do like to try and be a little bit interactive with our broadcast here on Petter, or on uh, Petter Picto Sports. So send me off a message either through Twitter or through Facebook. At Twitter, you can find me at Petter PC Sports, or PC underscore sports. That's, that's P-E-T-T-E-R. PC, as in Picto County, underscore sports is my Twitter handle. And the Facebook page is facebook.com slash Petter PC Sports. No underscore in that one. And let us know where you're tuning in from, who you're cheering for. If you want to send a shout out to a particular player or anything like that, there's a blast taken by Sullivan. That goes high. Or sorry, that was 19 Annis, not 18 Sullivan. My apologies. That puck cleared down the ice, and that's going to be another icing call against the Islanders here as they lead it 1-0 off of that goal at the 138 mark by Colton Jador. Hudson Crawley getting the assist on that one to open the scoring for the Islanders, who are the home team in this game. And... as the Ducks trying to get away with a late change but won't be able to do so. Now they're short a player. And so now we're going to see there's the draw and off of the face off. McKay not quite able to get the puck under control enough to get a shot away. There's a chance though for, for Young and that one cleared away. So we should mention there's a Mateo Young for the Ducks and a Brendan Young for the Islanders. And then on the Islanders, there's also two players with the surname Burke, Chase and Evan. So we got a few common surnames that we're going to have to be dealing with throughout the course of this game. We'll do the best we can with them. As the puck comes out down the ice, keeping hustling back to get onto it for the Ducks keeping goes to play it ahead got it up to Mateo Young now it'll come back around again Mumberket Luke Mumberket as we got a delayed penalty coming up here against the Islanders pass ahead Mateo Young will bring it across the line now he'll dump it in and as the Islanders touch up we'll get that penalty called hooking is the indication and it looks like it's going to be against Brendan Young. Or sorry, that's a nine, not a five. So that's Hudson Crawley who takes that penalty. At exactly four minutes of the first period. And so the Ducks will get the first power play of the afternoon here in this one. But the Islanders win the faceoff. And Jador plays the puck down the ice. Cowper, nice little play there to knock the puck off of his stick. And Birchall will get to it. Birchall, long lead pass up for Amaral. But that doesn't connect cleanly, and so it's sent back deep into the duck zone. Played ahead for Pridham. 
Pridham across for Amaral. He'll bring it in across the blue line. Cutting to the outside against Francis. Loses control of the puck and Jador will work his way ahead. Jador across the line. Cutting to the outside against Cowper. Gets the puck in front and they score! William Clark with the shorthanded goal at 4.49. Colton Jidor with the assist as he put that puck right onto the stick of William Clark and all Clark had to do was hold his stick still and it redirected the puck right into the net as the Ducks give up a shorthanded goal and the Islanders now lead it two to nothing. Puck played out to center. Sent back in across the line. Now Small will get it out again. Gathering it in is Annis. His pass intended for Zervobikos. Zervobikos chases the puck down, gets it across the line. I was told to just call him Z, but I can't really do that. It's not in my nature to not try and at least get the full names out. As we get confirmation of the goal, that was indeed William Clark, assisted by Jador. We're, and now there are 34 seconds left to go in the penalty. If I'm really mangling the name badly, I will just refer to him as Z, but I think Zervobikos is kind of close. At least I hope it is. And again, if I am mispronouncing it, it's not being done with any ill will or, or disrespect intended. There's a shot that goes off the glove of Malik Stevens. Now behind the net, trying to work his way out, but drawing the penalty is Gabriel Amaral. And so that's going to be another penalty against the Islanders here. This one going against Stevens. And they're going to call it a hook. I thought perhaps that one might be a hold. So a six second five on three for the Ducks. This penalty coming at the 5.54 mark. Puck played down towards the far side corner. Landry going in after it, doesn't quite get there. And now back to five on four as Marks dumps the puck down the length of the ice. Pass ahead for Amaral, that goes a little bit behind him and Marks will get the puck and dump it back deep into the Duck zone yet again. Cowper able to pick up there. Here comes Cowper through center into the Cape Breton County zone. Cowper back on the puck again. Tries to get a shot away. Fans on that slightly. And Jador gets it out to center. It's knocked off his stick by Gurney. Now Gurney will play the puck into the far corner. Cowper there to pick it up. Gets the pass ahead to Landry. Landry not able to clear as Evan Burke was there to knock that down. And looking at the information we got from the Cape Breton County Islanders, I don't I, I think it's safe to say that the Burks are not cousins or are not brothers. They may be cousins, I don't know for sure, but 40 seconds left to go in the penalty taken by Stevens. As the puck is back deep in the duck zone, Birchall now will get it ahead to Pridham. Pridham takes it out across the blue line. Has it taken away from him by McDougal. Francis plays it off the wall and now Annis fires it in. Zervobikos goes in after it there. It's played out to center. Birchall will dump it right back in again. Off the end boards for Keenan Francis. Francis. His clearing attempt knocked down by Amaral. Amaral, a couple of nice moves there. Puck ends up with Zervobikos. There's a shot. Save. Rebound. And that goes off the side of the net. We're back to five on five. Puck comes to the line. Annis with the shot. Save made off the glove of Tornidas. Now comes to the line. Held in there by Birchall. Zervobikos. Can't get the puck under control. It's played out to center. Annis trying to get away from Jador. 
Jador forcing the turnover there. Gets the puck down below the goal line. He ends up going into the boards a little bit awkwardly. A little slow to get up. Now he's up back to his feet. And we'll get a stoppage in play here with 6.34 left to go in this first period. 2-0 for the Cape Breton County Islanders. Face-off will be to the left of goaltender Sophie McDonald. Or Sophia McDonald, excuse me. Off of the draw, puck comes around the boards to the near side. Mumberket there to pick up. Mumberket able to get it out to center. Young going after it gets there. Just ahead. that's Brendan Young of the Islanders who got there just ahead of McKay or of uh, Landry rather. Now here's Shepard with it for the Islanders. His pass ahead goes off a skate. McKay trying to turn the other way. He loses it, but Mumberket there. Has it knocked off his stick. Now Miller has it knocked off his stick by Landry as some active sticks for both teams in neutral ice, creating turnover after turnover after turnover. It's not that the teams aren't doing a good job of protecting the puck. It's that both teams are doing such a good job defensively of getting their sticks in the way of pucks. Now played down deep into the duck end. Pack back to get it Gurney. He'll play it ahead. Pass forward. There for Sullivan. Sullivan trying to work his way around Young. Sullivan takes it below the goal line. Trying to get it out front. Stepping into a shot. Gurney He actually ends up running into. Uh, that was Marks that he collided with as he got that shot away. Now Miller gets the puck knocked off his stick. Here comes Pridham. And what a play by Marks. As he's basically playing with one hand on his hip because he was injured that hip. Now a glove save made by the defenseman. And he's got to come to the bench with a sore hand. That was Brendan Young. As the Cape Breton County Islanders are maybe ahead 2 to nothing, But they seem to be suffering in the war of attrition here. Now Cunningham... Blasts that puck down around the boards. Goes into the far side corner. Burke will play it back to the line to Burke. Or to Stevens, rather. Stevens shot. Saved by McDonald and then steered away. Now Sullivan trying to work his way around against Cunningham. Puck played around to the far side and Chase Burke will get to it. Plays it out to center. McDougal. Off the wall. Gathered in by Cowper. He'll play it forward for Matteo Young. There's a shot. That goes off the outside of the net. And now sent forward for Amaral. It's too far for him. Cunningham goes to dump it back in, but Amaral has that go off his arm. McDougal now able to pick up the puck in neutral ice. Carry it in across the line. McDougal can't get through the check of Birchall. There's a shot, though, by Young. Or by uh, Evan Burke, rather. And that's cleared away. Now Mateo Young has the puck knocked off his stick. Following up on the play, Cowper will send it in. Back to get it there is Cunningham. He plays it off the wall. McKay loses it to Crawley. Crawley sending the puck up the boards. Held in at the line by Cowper. There's a shot. Save. Rebound cleared as far as the line. Birchall with the shot. Bounces all the way in. And Tornitas with the save will hang on for a faceoff with 3.14 left to go here in the first period. 2-0 the score in favor of the Cape Breton County Islanders. Again, this is the U13A championship game. Tassa Ducks and Cape Breton County Islanders. Tomorrow morning, our first game will be the Tassa Ducks U13 AA team going against the Picto County Crushers. And even though we are pick, petter, Picto Sports, we will give you a fair and impartial call of that game. There's a shot! And that one just bounces wide. There's a chance, and it did. Yes, it does cross the line! It didn't at first, but the Ducks kept. Clawing away. And eventually they were able to get it 
in just past Calix Court Tornitas. And it's now a two to one score line. Great effort, great tenacity for the Ducks as they kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing until they were finally able to get one in and make it a two to one score line. Still just under three minutes left to go in the first period of this one. Played up the wall to Marks. Marks trying to get it to Miller. The puck ends up with Miller. He shoots and scores! So the one goal margin lasts just 12 seconds before Austin Miller reclaims the two goal lead. I believe Jacob Marks will get the assist on that one. Still don't have the scoring on the Ducks goal. As there were so many players jamming away at that puck, I couldn't tell you for sure who touched it and who didn't. So we'll wait and get you the wording or the scoring on the Ducks goal and then we'll get you any assists on the goal by Austin Miller that made it three to one. So Amaral gets the Ducks goal. So again, the goal is Gabriel Amaral from Mitchell Annis and Morgan Landry at 12.04. And that was the goal that made it two to one. And then at 12.16, just 12 seconds later, the goal by Austin Miller. And again, we're, there's a chance for Shepard, but he couldn't pull the trigger on that one. Now it's played out to Pridham. Pridham has it taken away from him by Small. Shepard brings it back in across the blue line, drops it to Miller. Miller. So it was Miller from Francis and Marks, 24 from 23 and 22. So Austin Miller from Keenan Francis and Jacob Marks at 12-16, making it the 3-1 score line that we now sit at. But don't wait too long because it might change again. Here comes a chance coming in and firing the shot just high and wide is Evan Burke. Now coming the other way, here's Amaral. He'll play it across to Mateo Young. Young trying to work his way around Young. Gets a shot off, and that's steered aside by Tornitas. Down into the corner. Young tried to center it. That pass ends up getting past everybody. And Birchall not able to hold it onside. Bringing the puck out. And getting it out to center was Burke, but he ends up losing it there. Amaral with the shot. That goes wide. Coming in is Annis. He'll send it back down below the goal line. Gathering it in there, Malik Stevens. He's trying to get away from the forecheck of Mumberket. Plays the puck up the wall. Amaral is there. Amaral's pass goes off a skate, comes to Birchill. Birchill steps in, gets a shot away. Deflected in behind the net. Now Amaral plays it out at the side of the net and trying to tuck it in was Deo Zervabikos. And the, pop, the uh, lane eventually taken away there by Caleb Tornitas with half a second left in the period. We get that stoppage, and so now the faceoff. And nothing doing there in that last half second. So we'll go into the first intermission such as it is it's just a quick stoppage and then a change of ends shots on goal in the first period by the Ducks 10 and by the Islanders 7 at the end of one period of play it is the Cape Breton County Islanders 3 and the Tassa Ducks 1 again the format for this game as it has been for all of our games today and will be for all the games tomorrow 
three 15-minute periods. We'll have a quick break here between periods one and two. And then between period two and three, we'll have a full flood. And uh, so, yeah, just a quick break here and then the change of ends. So Sophia McDonald will go and defend the net off to your left. And Calix Tornitas will go and defend the net off to your right for this second period. And Crawley and McKay take the draw to get this second period going. Again, this is our fifth game of the day. Tomorrow it'll be four more. We'll have the U13 double A's, the U15 B's and A's, and then the U18 A's to wrap things up. And also on AOTV tomorrow, not through Petter Picto Sports, it'll be another broadcast tr crew taking care of that of a game for us or, or for AOTV out of Halifax it will be the female day of champions and a couple of actually they're using a couple of different venues out of the uh, HRM region tomorrow to give all of the female teams a chance to play for their provincial titles and they will be available through AOTV. Here comes McKay. McKay cutting to the outside. McKay gets the shot away. The puck is, what a play by Small to take that puck off the line. Tornitas made enough of a save to slow the puck down. And then Jason Small with a huge play, pulling that puck off the goal line. Number 11 for the Cape Breton County Islanders. Saves a goal there with a brilliant, brilliant play. Wow. If these players were a few age groups older, I'd say that Calix Tornitas would be buying Jason Small a beverage after the game. Maybe he still will. Maybe it'll be like a Diet Coke or something. But you know, if this was uh, a juice box, there you go. Yeah, that's it. You know, if this was, you know, over 19 years old, that uh, Small would have earned himself a cold beverage that has frostiness and foam on the top of it after that defensive effort. Now Marks takes the puck down below the goal line. Gets it taken away from him by Amaral. Marks able to win it back, though, as Shepard was in there creating havoc. Now Sullivan plays the puck off the wall to himself. He'll get it across the center ice line, in across the blue line, but then has the puck knocked away from him, and Miller will start to work it up the other way. Miller gets the pass through to Marks. Marks then taking a wild swing at it was Birchall, and he swung and missed on one that... Uh, I think R.A. Dickey would have been happy with that sh with that puck going in. It was a bit of a knuckleball. See, I'm old enough to remember when the knuckleballers, there was like more than one of them at a time in the league. You know, back in the old days of Necro and Necro and the guys who created the knuckleball. And yeah, I'm old though. So there you go. <laughs> puck played up the wall as the Ducks are able to get it out to center. Here comes McKay. McKay does get a shot away despite the defensive effort by Evan Burke to tie him up. Now Annis with the shot from the point. McKay wasn't in a good position to get a deflection there as he was in a little bit too deep by that point, but he still tried. Now they battle at the far wall. McKay trying to work it free, as is Zervobikos. And now... The Islanders come away with it. Here comes McDougal. McDougal able to get by Annis, but a good active stick there by keeping allows the Ducks to get back and get things organized. 12.15 to go here, second period. Here comes Annis with the puck. He'll lead the rush. 
into the zone, trying to get around Francis. Annis gets it back again, looking far post, and sends that one just wide. Now stepping in and getting the puck low is keeping. It goes behind the net. Francis there for it. He'll play it off the wall. Annis not able to hold it on side. That should have been, and it will be too many men as the Ducks got caught on that change. And so they will go shorthanded for the first time in this game. A bench minor for too many players. And it's going to be Deo Zervobikos going over to serve. And our PA announcer here in the building does such a great job. He's got so much high energy. And he sometimes ex extends names out a little bit. He's probably not going to do it on... The, on he doesn't normally do it on a penalty, but I've been waiting to see what he does with with uh, this name. As Zervobikos will go over and Servobikos the penalty. Huh? 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 Okay, that gets a roll of the eyes from Ashton, my cameraman. Well, when we're here for nine games over two days, you got to do something to amuse yourself at some point, right? Ducks get the puck down the ice. Mumberkett hustling in hard on the forecheck there. Wasn't able to get his stick on it. Now here's Mills. He'll play it ahead. Crowley. Good. Ah, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> There's a shot and a save made by McDonald. And she'll hang on for a face-off. And with 1.15 left to go in the penalty and 11.05 left to go in the second period, we'll get another stoppage here. Draw will be taken by Ethan Shepard. Pridham tried to clear the zone, but Cunningham knocked that puck down. Now that it's played with a high stick, and so we'll get another whistle. And the faceoff will stay inside the TASA zone as the Cape Breton County Islanders on the power play here. Okay, so there's two different Burks for the Islanders. I think I've mentioned this. Evan Burke is wearing one blue sock and one white sock. So if I just refer to Burke, and you can tell that he's wearing two different colored socks, you know it's Evan Burke. And the other Burke, number seven, is Chase Burke. And he's got a different color. Uh, he's got a blue name bar with white letters. Everybody else has white name bars with blue letters. So if you're able to notice those details, you can tell which Burke I'm talking about. And there is Evan Burke of the one blue sock carrying the puck up ice, bringing it across the blue line. Then he drops it off to McDougal. McDougal, though, has it knocked away from him. And looking to clear the zone is Annis. He doesn't quite get the puck cleared out. As McDougal was able to help keep it onside. Now it comes to the line. Francis gets himself set, fires a shot, and it launches up over the glass and out of play. And we'll get a stoppage with just six seconds left in the penalty. That was taken by the Tassa Ducks for too many men. Being served by Zervobikos. And uh, I just want to apologize to the fans of both teams. You guys are catching us on our fifth of five games today, so we are getting a little bit punchy. Puck comes to the line. Francis holds it in there. Launches a shot. That goes just up over the crossbar. Not quite as high as the last shot that he launched, though. Now it's cleared out to center as we are back to five on five. Francis will get to the puck just ahead of Zervobikos. Francis gets the pass ahead to Clark. But Clark tied up by Annis. Puck held in at the line by Francis. And McDonald able to steer that one over to the far wall. Pass ahead from Birchall to McKay. McKay will bring it across the blue line. McKay with a shot. That goes over the net. Hits the end boards. Back to get it is Francis. Up the wall. It goes behind Clark. Annis not able to hold it on side. Dumps it back in. Zervobikos didn't hear the offside call at first. Now he, And then once he does, he quickly gets out to center. 
And that allows Young to step back in and get on the puck. Getting it in deep. Jador has it roll away from him. Now Young can't quite get his stick on it. And we're going to get a penalty slashing. And it looks like it's going to go against Malik Stevens. So that's going to be his second penalty of the afternoon. This one coming with 18 or sorry, no, that was uh, William Clark. My apologies, not Malik Stevens. William Clark taking the slashing penalty with 8.45 left to go here in the second period. And the Ducks go on the power play for the third time. They've given up one shorthanded goal already. There's a swing and a bit of a miscue by keeping. Puck played up the wall, gets to keeping again. This time he'll play it down. Picked up there by Brendan Young, but he ends up losing it to Zervobikos. Zervobikos tries to jam at it again, but it ends up coming free and bringing it out to center there is Miller. Miller couldn't get past Gurney. Gurney will play it across now to keeping. Keeping's pass ahead intended for Mumberkit. That gets broken up by Small. And the Ducks back into their own zone with 115 left to go in the penalty. Mumberkett trying to work his way around Small. Gets the puck down into the corner. Amaral there to pick it up. Plays it out in front. And Mumberkett just couldn't quite get his stick on it. Now Mills ahead for Shepard. Shepard will bring it out to sec. Er, it was Miller, excuse me, not Mills. Getting it ahead to Shepard. Shepard with the shot. McDonald the save. Rebound cleared away by Gurney. Here come the Ducks. Keeping. In across the blue line. Keeping. Couldn't get through Small and Young. And Young will come away with the puck. And he'll fire it on the length of the ice with 30 seconds left to go in the penalty. McDonald out of the net. Sets the puck there for Gurney. Gurney gets it over to Pridham. Pridham's pass just a little bit too far in front of Annis, or in front of Sullivan, excuse me. Now McKay will bring the puck into the zone. McKay still with it. Tried to drop it off to Pridham. Pridham ended up over skating it, and that'll allow Marks to bring it the other way. But Marks has it knocked off his stick by keeping. Bringing it back into the zone again is McKay. McKay ends up misplaying the puck, and that'll allow Marks to or Miller to get, get it and bring it out to center as we're back to five on five. Here comes Miller. That shot knocked down. Puck goes into the corner. Marks on it there. Tries to play it ahead. But it's turned over to the Ducks. Keeping. Not able to clear the zone as it stepping up to it was Cunningham. He plays it around the boards. Keeping coughs it up there to Evan Burke. But the Ducks get it back and launch it down the ice, and it's going to go right on target onto the net. And as Tornitas steered it away, that negated the icing, obviously. Now in the corner, Stevens plays the puck ahead. So there's actually two players with, with blue name tags and white letters for the Islanders. Out in front for Zervobikos, and he puts that shot just wide. Now Marks battling against Young. Marks still with the puck as we got a delayed penalty coming up against Young for holding, I believe, they're going to call. No, they're going to call it hooking. Either way, it's Mateo Young going off for the second Tassa Ducks penalty of the afternoon. This one coming five, with 5.25 left to go in the second period. And the Cape Breton County Islanders leading by two. Three to one is the score. Oh, and we have a goalie switch for the Tassa Ducks as Brennan Fitzgerald comes in to take over as we're a little bit over halfway through the game here. So this switch... And I'd hate, I mean no disrespect, but if I'm Brendan Fitzgerald, I'm a little annoyed that I come in and the very first thing I have to deal with is a penalty kill, although that penalty kill is now over as Shepard got his stick right into the armpit 
of one of the Ducks players. So just like that, Brendan Fitzgerald now has some four-on-four -four time to get himself into the game. Sophie McDonald finishes the game with 11 saves on 12 shots. Or, nope, sorry, with nine saves on 12 shots. So the... And, and again, the penalty there at 9.45. So we're going to have a minute 44 left of the uh, of the four-on-four. Four. And then it'll be a very brief power play for the uh, Ducks. Their third power play, or fourth power play of the game will be just 10 seconds in length. As that was all the power play time that the Islanders had before... Shepard took that hooking penalty. Now here comes a chance two on one. Landry gets it over to Mumberket. Mumberket looking to play it back to Landry, but the pass a little bit behind him as Francis was doing a good job on the back check. And is cleared down the ice, keeping there to pick up. Tries to make a long lead pass. Just held on side there, stepping into it was Ward. Isaac Ward with a nice play to keep that puck just inside the line. And now out come the Ducks again. Here with it now is Benjamin Sullivan. Sullivan in across the line, takes the shot, and it takes a duck bounce off of the post, then the back of the foot of Tornitas, and then into the net. Sometimes you need a little bit of luck to be on your side. And for Sullivan, that's exactly what happened there. Or was it Sullivan or was it Annis? I thought it was 18 Sullivan, but it might have been 19 Annis. And with 4.15 left to go here in the second period, it's now 3-2. to two. And we'll wait for the official announcement. I thought it was 18 but it might have been 19. Now there's McKay with a shot. That gets blocked by Brendan Young. No, it was indeed Sullivan. Now there's another. And that's an unassisted goal for Sullivan at, uh, at 10.45. And so we'll get another face-off just outside, or just to the right of the or left of the Islander goal puck comes back to the line Gurney with a shot there's a save and Jador will get the puck now and will carry it out to center here comes Jador trying to work his way around to the outside against Cowper Jador now cutting to the middle of the ice still with it Jador trying to get a shot away but Amaral able to knock that puck off of his stick now a clearing attempt goes off of Jador Young will hold it in at the line Cowper able to get it over to Gurney, Gurney not able to clear the zone as the puck held in by Evan Burke. Burke with the shot, that's blocked. And getting the puck is Gurney as the Ducks are on the power play, but just as quickly as I say that, the power play comes to an end. As both penalties, again, were just 10 seconds apart. So not a lot of time for the Ducks to have had a power play there, but now here they come with Cowper leading the rush. Cowper, nice little move to get around Cunningham, throws the puck at the net, and it's steered away there by Tornitas. Mumberket trying to come away from the wall. Marks able to get the puck off of his stick. And now Marks will get the pass ahead. It gets beyond McDougal. But McDougal goes down into the corner working against Cowper. And now getting the puck up. The most recent goal scorer, Sullivan. He plays it across to Mumberket. Mumberket into across the blue line. Following up was Sullivan. His shot ends up hitting a leg. And the Islanders pick back up, and out they come. Cunningham will get it ahead for McDougal. McDougal makes a couple of moves, and what a save there by Brennan Fitzgerald. A beautiful save. Now another chance, and Fitzgerald makes another nice save, keeping his team down by just a goal. Now Annis through center gets it to Sullivan. But Sullivan ends up losing it in all the traffic. Played out to center. Mumberket trying to bring it back in across the line. Takes a bump from Stevens. And the puck comes to Annis. Annis trying to get away from McDougal. 
Now gets away from another check. Ends up running into his own player, McKay, but McKay able to get it somewhat down the zone. Cunningham plays it back out again. 1.39 left to go here, second period. McDougal can't play the puck as his stick was lifted. Now McKay will bring it across the line, but Zervobikos ends up coming in just a little bit too early, and so that's going to be an offside call with 1.27 left to go here. It was at 1.27. When the whistle blew, they're going to put a couple seconds back on or they're just going to wait to... Yeah. So they're going to just delay... or They put five seconds back on the board. I don't think it was quite that long that it kept running. But nevertheless, here comes Amaral. He's got Jador's stick in his armpit. And they're going to call, I think they're going to call both of them. They're going to call Jador for hooking and then Amaral for holding the stick. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. They're calling both players. So Amaral gets the holding the stick. And Jador gets the hook. As these coincidental penalties come with a minute and 21 left to go here. In this second period. So we will continue to be five on five here. But those two players will be unavailable to their teams. Until the first whistle after 39 seconds have elapsed in the third period. Puck played out to center. Keeping. Sends it back in. Here comes Sullivan with it. Sullivan gets the pass across. He shoots. They score! Nate McKay with the shot gets it past Tornitas after taking the pass from Sullivan and that ties up the game at three apiece with 106 left to go here in the third or second period a couple of very nice goals by the Ducks Here in this third period, one, four on four. The next one coming with coincidental penalties, so it was five on five. As we're now into the final minute of the second period of what is now a tie hockey game. It was one nothing, then two nothing for the Islanders. Then two one, then three one, then three two, and now three three between the Ducks and Islanders here at the Rath East Link Community Center. As we await the announcement of the goal, it should be McKay from Sullivan. There's McKay. He ends up overskating the puck, losing the, his footing on his own. Puck gets to the line, held in there. There's a shot, gets knocked down. There's a chance for Sullivan. He scores! And the Tassa Ducks get their first lead of the game with 11.7 seconds left to go in the third period, or second period, excuse me. And Benjamin Sullivan now has two goals and an assist in a span of four minutes and three seconds. As Sullivan gets his second goal of the game, his third point, to pull his team into their first lead of the afternoon. And then just with four seconds left, there's a chance for a shot. Actually, they announced that goal as Gurney from McKay. I thought for sure that McKay shot that in directly, but apparently it was Gurney from McKay. And I'm pretty sure there should have been a second assist to Sullivan on that one because Sullivan passed it over to, to McKay, who took that shot. Anyway, 
regardless of who gets credit for it, it is three goals in that second period, all scored by the Tassa Ducks. So a 3-1 deficit becomes a 4-3 lead going into the third period. We're going to take a break. We'll come back and get you ready for that third period in just a few minutes. You are watching Hockey Nova Scotia Day of Champions from the Rath Eastlink Community Center here in Truro on Petter Picto Sports through AOTV.
Welcome back as we get ready for the start of the third period here. A goaltending change for the Cape Breton County Islanders. After playing the first two periods of the game, Calix Tornitas is done. It's now going to be Owen Arsenault coming in to finish off the game. Tornitas facing 22 shots and giving up four goals on those 22 shots. And for the uh, the shots in that second period, by the way, were 12 to 8 for the Tassa Ducks. The two period total favors the Ducks 22 to 15. And the score favors the Ducks 4 to 3 after that goal that came with just 12 seconds or 11.7 seconds, if you want to get really picky about it, left to go in that second period. And so the and the goal now it's just it's being put up on here. Benjamin Sullivan, Nate McKay gets an assist as does Cohen keeping. So Benjamin Sullivan's second goal. I'm going to say it's his third point because he did. I'm sure he should have had an assist on that second on the uh, third goal, the one that made it 3-3. And now we're ready for the start of the third period here. So both starting goaltenders have been replaced. And it's now Owen Arsenault and Brennan Fitzgerald in as the third period gets underway here. 15 minutes to decide a provincial U13A champion between either the Tassa Ducks or Cape Breton County Islanders. One of those two teams will get to say that they are the best U13A team in the province. In front of the net, there's McDougal with a chance. And getting the save is Brennan Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, a much bigger goaltender than McDonald. Here's Mumberkett working up the wing. Can't get past Small as the puck is knocked down at the line. And now here comes McDougal back up the ice. McDougal trying to work his way through. Gets, his, gets tripped up by Landry. And as Landry got his stick in there, he knew... And so Landry's going to go off for tripping here at, four, at, at uh, 47 seconds of the third period. And this will be the third power play of the afternoon for the Cape Breton County Islanders. They are 0 for 2 so far with the man advantage. They did score one short-handed goal. Back in the first period. Miller in to take the draw and wins it cleanly back to Marks. Marks fires it into the far side corner. Comes up the boards to Shepard. Shepard in front for Crawley. Crawley with the shot. But that got deflected and redirected off the stick of keeping. Which helped send it well wide. Now Miller trying to get the puck towards the net. That'll get broken up and sent down the ice. Hustling back to get on it for the Islanders is Francis. Francis turns in front of his own net, starts to work his way ahead. Here comes Francis. Barreling through, has his stick knocked out of his hands. Throws up his hands in a bit of frustration on that, but isn't going to get a call as he was holding it pretty loosely, to be honest. Now a pass ahead for Miller. Miller. Ends up losing control of the puck, and it's going to be an offside against the Islanders. 105 left to go in the tripping penalty taken by Morgan Landry. And so we'll get the face off just outside the Tassa blue line here with the Islanders still on the power play. The draw one back to Gurney, but as he went to fire it down the ice, kind of fanned on it. This time, Gurney with a bit more solid of a shot down the ice. And back to get the puck there is Francis. He plays it around to the far side. Shepard has it get by him, but then an attempted dump back in by Cowper. First one was fanned on. Second one does get into the zone. Now played across to Marks on the near side. He'll get it out to center, and it does get all the way through to Miller. Here comes Miller in across the line. Miller working to the outside. Gurney, and that's going to be a tripping call against Gurney. And 
a five on three now for 29 seconds. And it looked to me from this angle like Gurney got all puck and then Miller lost his footing on his own. But, I mean, we're up here above the ice surface where it looks a little bit different. And uh, I just, I'm not too sure about that call myself, but again, it might have looked very different from ice level. Here comes Burke. Burke with the one red, or the one blue sock, gets the shot, fires it wide. Puck comes to Jador, he's got two goals this afternoon. Jador centering pass, gets a little bit beyond Burke, then comes off the wall to Burke, and he fires that shot wide. First penalty has expired as Landry is back out there. Now Jador with the puck, he fires a shot, that goes off a leg wide, comes off the end boards, and Landry able to clear it away from danger. Birchall now, not able to clear the zone. Centering pass for McDougal, goes a bit behind him. McDougal chases the puck down, plays it to Cunningham, back down to McDougal. He'll get it down low to Landry, or to uh, Burke, excuse me. Burke plays it out, comes back to the line. There's a shot taken by Stevens, and the save made by Fitzgerald, and he'll hang on for a faceoff. 59 seconds left in the penalty taken by Gurney for the tripping. Amaral will take this draw against Miller. As they line up, Amaral able to get the puck back to Cowper, who fires it down the ice. Arsenault settles it aside into the corner. Back to get it is Small. He fires it around the boards to the far side. And now carrying the puck ahead, Miller gets it, or Marks rather, gets it up to Miller. Miller over to Shepard. Shepard with the shot. And the save made there by Fitzgerald. Shepard back on it again. Takes it back towards the line. Now Ward steps in with it, but ends up getting it knocked off his, knocked off of his stick by Mumberkett. And that allows Keeping to fire at the length of the ice. Comes right to the front of the net. Arsenault clears it away from there. And it's going to be uh, Francis. Keenan Francis working his way down the left wing. Fires a shot. And Brennan Fitzgerald makes the save and hangs on. Just eight seconds left now in the penalty to Ryan Gurney. And the faceoff will be to the right of the Ducks goal. Eight seconds left to go in the penalty. As Gurney... Anxiously awaiting his chance to get back out onto the ice. Draw one back to the line, but not able to hold it in was Young. And now it's going to be Mateo Young bringing it the other way as we're back to five on five. Mateo Young with the shot. And the save made there by Arsenault. Puck still loose. And it's going to be gathered up by Small. He'll play it around to the far side boards where Marks will get to it. Marks able to clear it out to center. 10.25 left to go here, third period. Ducks with a 4-3 lead. Pass up for McKay. McKay trying to work his way around Young. Takes the puck behind the net. Comes out the near side. Tried to reverse direction, but ended up going right into the defender, Brendan Young. And then back the other way came the Islanders, and then the Ducks got it out to center. And it's dumped back in again. Annis with the puck now. Coming out. Lot loses the puck to Clark right at the blue line. Clark gets it to Miller. Miller with the shot and a kick save by Fitzgerald. Now Clark turns and fires. That goes wide around the boards. Miller will get to it get before it gets to the line. Plays it off the wall. And bringing it out to center are the Ducks. But it goes right onto the stick of Stevens. He gets it ahead for Clark. Clark coming in right wing side. Gets a shot away. That's blocked by Birchall. Birchall ends up taking it the rest of the way to Fitzgerald. And Fitzgerald able to cover up and hang on for a faceoff. 5.37 gone in the third period. And we remain where we've been since there were 12 seconds left in the second period when the Ducks went ahead for the first time in this game.
Crawley in behind the net. Gets to the puck there, gives it to Jador. Jador ends up losing it, and here comes Zervobikos. He gets it out to center, but it's turned back over and now brought back in by Jador. Jador into the corner, trying to come out with it, can't get through all the black shirts. Puck comes to the line for Cunningham. His shot, and Fitzgerald the save, and he'll hang on for a face-off. And then after the whistle, we get the two number 10s, Cunningham and Pridham, give, give each other just a slight little bump. <laughs> and then Pridham on his way to the bench gives Cunningham a little wave as he goes by. <gasps> After winning the draw, Sullivan plays it down to Birchall who gets it around the boards, but there to knock it down was Jador. Now Puck comes to the near side. Clark able to just hold it on side ahead of Mumberket. Down into the corner with it, Crawley. He loses control of it. Puck comes loose. And Sullivan trying to get it tied up under Fitzgerald, helping out his goaltender. And he does just enough to get the puck tied up and get a whistle with now 8.34 left to go here in the third period. Want to once again thank Hockey Nova Scotia for inviting Petter Picto Sports and AOTV to, par to be part of this Day of Champions. And a reminder that we'll be back with you tomorrow for four more games as we name four more provincial championship teams. We've already had the U11B Cape uh, Coal Harbor Red Wings. We've had the U11A Straight Richmond Pirates. We've had the U11AA Sackville Flyers and the U13B New Waterford Sharks named as champions one of these two teams is eight minutes away from claiming their provincial banner will it be the tassa ducks or will it be the cape breton county islanders and then tomorrow we start with the tassa ducks at the u13 double a level taking on my hometown team the picto county crushers and then we go to u15 for a couple of games and finally u18 to wrap it all up tomorrow afternoon but right now here's McDougal with the puck trying to get a centering pass through but it was knocked away with a nice play there by Birchall now Annis he'll get it ahead to Young Mateo Young out to center that pass goes off the foot of Amaral and Francis able to dump it back in deep Annis back to get it gets it away from McDougal by playing it to the near side wall Amaral will, will, or Amaral will pick up there Amaral has it knocked off his stick. Nice defensive play. Active stick by Isaac Ward. McDougal. Pass to Burke. Catches him nicely in stride. Burke coming in. Gets a little bit of help from, uh, from uh, Birchall blowing a tire as he was trying to make a turn. Now here's a couple of nice moves by Miller. But Birchall redeeming himself by knocking the puck away from Miller. Now here comes Pridham. Miller on the back check. Pridham can't get through as both Miller and Francis were there. Miller ends up with the puck. He'll flip it out. Gurney knocks it down at the blue line. Ends up on the stick of Francis. Francis out to center. Still with it. Francis, a couple more nice moves, but we're getting offside as Shepard comes in just ahead of the play. And so Keenan Francis goes in offside with 6.13 left to go here in the third period. The Ducks up by a goal, but it's only a one goal margin. And we've had some very close games in this one. We had one game where the winning goal, they're small with a shot. That goes over the crossbar into the end boards. We had a game where the winning goal was scored with 30 seconds left in regulation. We thought we were going to hit that O word that some people don't like to talk about because they think it's a jinx if we say it. I'm going to say it anyway. We almost hit overtime in that game. I don't believe in jinxes. Here's Pridham with the puck. He'll get it ahead. Going in after it there, Zervobikos, but getting to it just ahead of him is Brendan Young. 
Now Jador trying to work it ahead. He gives his man a bump along the wall. That was Mumberket who got run into by Jador. A difference of more than a couple inches and more than a few pounds between those two guys. Now we got another hit and that's going to be a penalty as going down heavily is Jacob Marks and the penalty taken there by Mitchell Annis. With 5-12 left to go here in the third period. And so the Islanders with their fifth power play of the afternoon, a chance to tie up this game. Meanwhile, Jacob Marks being attended to by the trainer. And it looks like he's getting back to his feet under his own power, so that's a good sign. And Marks seems to be favoring, favoring his hip a little bit there, perhaps. And so the Islanders go to the power play here again with 5-12 left to go in the third period. And the, check, the penalty is body checking. Shepard takes the puck down towards the corner. Shepard trying to get away from Cowper. Gets the puck back to... Miller, Miller's shot goes over the net. Now puck off the boards, comes right to Amaral. Amaral can't get past Small. And now coming back to pick up the puck. Miller ahead for Crawley. Crawley tried to get it back to Miller, but that pass goes just beyond him. And Cowper able to send it down the length of the ice. 124 left to go in the penalty to Mitchell Annis. Played ahead, knocked down there by McKay. Here's McKay shorthanded. He takes a shot. Save made by Arsenault. And then the second chance steered away. Now the puck sent behind the net. Shepard will go and gather it up there. And he'll start to pick up speed as he's got empty ice in front of him. Shepard through center. Loses control of the puck right at the blue line. And that allows Mateo Young to come the other way. Here comes Young. Young with the backhand shot. He scores! Mateo Young with a shorthanded goal makes it a two goal lead with exactly four minutes left to go in the third period it's now five to three what a big goal for Mateo Young there knocking down the puck bringing it ahead getting a backhand shot away and having that backhander get just past Owen Arsenault into the net and giving the Ducks their first two-goal lead of the game. But now here's Janor with a shot. And what a kick save by Fitzgerald getting that leg out. And now it's launched down the length of the ice by McKay. And it is an unassisted shorthanded goal as we thought. Now here comes Jador. Jador coming in, gets the shot away. And that goes a little bit high. Puck comes around the boards. Ward tries to step up, but Sullivan able to get it around him. Sullivan down into the Islander zone as we're back to five on five. The penalty to Annis has expired. 3.07 left to go in what is now a two goal game in favor of the Tassa Ducks. Jador loses the puck. There's Zervobikos with a shot and a save made by Arsenault. Another chance and another save by 
Arsenault as he'll hang on with 2.50 left to go here in the third period. And the Islanders trailing it 5-3. to three. What a great back and forth game we've had here in this one at the U13A level. And if today's entertainment has been any indication, you're going to want to tune in tomorrow for more great hockey. There's a shot from Zervobikos and another save made by Arsenault again. And we'll get another faceoff to Arsenault's left. Four games tomorrow at 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 and 3. As the puck comes out to center, Keeping will launch it deep into the Islander zone. It goes all the way around the boards and now out. Marks brings the puck ahead. Marks tries to get it in front, but it goes off a stick and stays over at the side of the net. Ducks looking to clear the zone, doing everything they can. Sullivan kicked at it. Now bringing it out is Annis. Annis in across the blue line. Has the puck knocked off his stick by Marks. Following up, Zervabikos with the shot. And the save made by Arsenault. 2.05 left here in the third period. And you got to figure that the Cape Breton County Islanders are going to want to try and get Owen Arsenault out of this net sooner than later to try and give their, themselves a bit better of a chance to try and... Climb back into this one. Here's Miller. He has the puck taken away from him just outside the blue line. Amaral now gains the red. He'll just dump the puck in as the clock becoming the best friend of the Tassa Ducks right now. Played up to Marks. His pass for Miller gets through him. And Gurney gains the red line and dumps it right back in again. Played around for Marks. Marks. Gets it up to Miller. That pass goes off his skate. Amaral will dump it back into the Cape Breton County zone. Down to 85 seconds left to go. Bringing it forward is Brendan Young. His pass goes off the stick of McKay. Ends up on Cowper's hand, in Cowper's hands. But he ends up losing it there. Now working it forward is Marks. Into the Islander or into the duck zone. And coming out of the net is Arsenal for the extra attacker. McDougal comes out onto the ice. For the as the extra skater. Here's Marks with the puck. Trying to get it through. He can't get his shot through. Sullivan now looking to clear the zone. He will. We're down to the final 53 seconds. Marks goes to dump it back in. It's knocked down. And now back into their own zone. Picking up the puck is Marks. 45 seconds left to go. Marks trying to work his way ahead. He'll get the pass across for Shepard. Shepard brings it across the blue line. Working to the outside against Cowper. Shepard ends up losing his footing, and we're going to get a penalty. And they're going to call that a cross check. So the Islanders will have a chance of six on four here for 30 seconds. But they only have 30 seconds to try and get a power play goal six on four, and then try and get a second goal as well. And the Islanders are going to use their timeout to see what they can come up with to see if they have something in the playbook to try and get the two goals that they need to tie up this game with 30.6 seconds left to go. Whoop. Help if I put that timeout on the right side on my sheet. Here we go. Ducks use their, or Islanders use their timeout with 30 seconds left in the third. And it'll be six on four. Fitzgerald will be in the net for the Ducks. The six attackers will be McDougal, Shepard, Burke, Miller, Marks, and Francis. The defenders, Annis, Burchill, Servobikos, and Pridham. And of course, Fitzgerald in the net. 30.2 seconds left to go. So here we go. Do the Islanders have the miracle finish in them? Not 
quite the start that they needed as it's launched down the ice back to get it is Marks. He'll take it behind the net. 20 seconds left. Up all the way to Shepard. Shepard having trouble keeping the puck under control. Now it's gathered up by Burke. Evan Burke in across the line. Burke takes the shot. And that goes just off of Fitzgerald into the far boards. Four seconds left. Three, two, there's a shot. Another save by Fitzgerald. And he'll hang on with half a second on the clock. So we have one more face-off, but it'll just be a formality as the Ducks will be your 2022 champions here. Just half a second on the clock. And there it is. The Cape Breton County Islanders fall just short. The Tassa Ducks are the U13A champions for Hockey Nova Scotia for the 2021-22 season. What an incredible game for the Islanders. An incredible season ends with a disappointing finish in this final. But you know that they are going to be able to look back on this game a few years or maybe even a few days from now and be proud of their silver medals that they've earned might not feel it right this moment but the, the Islanders they have a lot to be proud of and the Tassa Ducks they get to enjoy being called the provincial champions at this day of champions here in Truro and now we'll send things downstairs for the post game presentations Thank <laughs> you. 
So there it is, five games, five champions in the book for day number one. Congratulations to the Tassa Ducks for winning the, U15, or the U13A championship. They joined the Coal Harbor Red Wings U11Bs, 
the straight Richmond Pirate U11 A's, the Sackville Flyer U11 Double A's, and the New Waterford Sharks U13 B's as provincial champions so far. Four more games to go tomorrow, and we'll have them all here for you live on Petter Picto Sports through AOTV. Until tomorrow morning when the first game comes at 9 o'clock, on behalf of my awesome cameraman, Ashton Riki, this is Michael Petter saying may your skates always be sharp, may your shots always hit the top shelf. Thanks so much for watching. The final score once again, Tassa Ducks win the provincial title with a 5-3 victory over the Cape Breton County Islanders. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday night.